Welcome to another episode of Hardware News. We're going over the last week of news in the industry. There's a lot of stuff about Vega, but some Intel rumors and sort of confirmed announcements at this point. Discussion on NAND pricing and now GDDR pricing as well. So GDDR memory looks like it's about to face the same fate as NAND for SSDs and DRAM at this point. So that'll be interesting to see going forward. Before getting to that, we partnered with LastPass for this video, the password management solution that makes it easy to randomly generate a new password for each website and account without needing to memorize them all. This strengthens account security so that you're no longer using the same password for multiple sites and makes it easier to manage when one gets leaked. Learn more at the link in the description below. Let's start off with the AMD Vega stuff. So this week, we on our stream got a whole lot of questions about what are your thoughts on the AMD Vega pricing? And for those who aren't aware, basically the rumor was from a Gibbo at Overclockers UK that basically the initial MSRP for Vega products, 64 and 56, was only going to last for about a day before that price increased. And there wasn't any independent confirmation on that from AMD. We've asked, other folks have asked. I'm not aware of any official statements from the company. So that makes it kind of difficult to really figure out what they're doing. With regard to Gibbo's post from overclockers.co.uk, which claimed that AMD had provided rebates to retailers, i.e. MDF, we've learned from two different board partners in the industry who contacted us that this appears to be correct. We were told Gibbo is right about the prices and rebates on the Vega 64 cards and that it looks like the lower price of $500 was only going to exist for initial launch when those rebates were available. And now that they're not, it appears that pricing will increase based on what our sources were saying. We're still waiting on comments from AMD. We reached out on the 15th and haven't yet received a response. But for pricing specifically, I think what we're looking at is a scenario where retailers and board partners are going to benefit a whole lot more than AMD on Vega. And that's because ultimately AMD, if they're not gonna see a penny of the money if retailers decide to overcharge on cards by 150 bucks or 200 bucks. AMD doesn't see that money, the retailers do. And the same is true for board partners who increase their price because they need to make money. And Vega, Vega 56 and 64, it turns out, are really expensive to make to the point where 56, kind of skeptical on if AMD is actually profiting on that card without the help of their packs, their bundle packs. HBM is very expensive. We have some numbers that I'm trying to confirm independently, but have an idea of what it costs, have an idea of what the VRM costs, have an idea of what the cooler costs. I don't know. I don't know if they're making money on 56, not standalone. And if they are, it's very little, like an insignificant amount. But it seems like it's probably negative. 64 is more, uh, it's closer to break even or profit. But uh, the bundles are where the money is. And so we were talking with some third parties, some companies, and the initial quantity of Vega cards was kind of on the low side. Uh, the quantity allocated to packs was pretty high. So we didn't know this about the packs when they were first announced, which was Newegg ended up listing them as independent product SKUs, where you buy the card, the monitor, the motherboard, the CPU, all together, end of story. You don't even get to pick which component is mixed and matched. It's just either it exists in a SKU or it doesn't. The way we thought it would work is that you would buy a Vega card that would cost $100 more and then it would apply coupons to your cart, and then you go and pick the things you want that were supported by the pack, not how it turned out to work. So either way, it looks like a high allocation went to the packs, and I mean, that's pretty obvious because the individual cards basically sold out immediately. Whatever there was, there wasn't much of it, and the packs persisted for at least an entire day if they're not still there at the time this video goes up. So uh, interesting scenario. It looks like AMD is trying to make some money back, but Either way, we're not sure on the pricing concerns. We're not sure if it's going to go up and stay there or not. Uh, and we've tried to confirm it, but we haven't gotten a response yet. So it can't really go too far with that story right now. As far as the different heights on GPU and HPM, so we talked to just one AIB partner right now. I haven't, I haven't spoken to enough to really make a firm statement on this. But uh, the concern was basically that GPU height and HPM height are different on Vega. And so you might have concerns with applying an aftermarket liquid cooler. 
And it sounds like the difference that exists is less about height and more about the uh, adhesive used. I guess uh, it's a silicone versus something else. I don't have the full details, but it sounds like that's more of the difference than height. That said, uh, we bought some stuff that will help us check the height on at least our, our unit. And hopefully other reviewers who have Vega or other users who have Vega can follow our steps and check the height of the HBM and the GPU on your units, then we can all compare data. And we'll be doing that separately, probably in just a small article. So that's the initial stuff. We have some other interesting news on our overclocking efforts with Vega 56 we'll be talking about in our hybrid mod, which we're filming shortly and will be up probably the day after this goes up. And while we're on the topic of prices and video cards, some more uh, unfavorable news, I guess. Digitimes reported that GDDR prices, or specifically video card memory prices, not sure if HBM is included in that, but potentially, those prices apparently have gone up by about 30.8% for orders placed in August. So that's the cost to the manufacturer by the supplier. Went up from 650 per order to 850 per order per uh, unit. I believe it's a single module that they're talking about for that price. And uh, HBM, GDDR5, and 5X, those are basically the second most expensive components on a video card after the GPU proper. And then you have things like the cooler sort of down towards the end, the VRM ar around where the cooler is. But prices on those look like they're going up 31% for these suppliers. That may affect consumer prices as well. If it does, we won't see the impact of those prices for probably another couple months. Uh, but it'll be hard to discern the difference from that versus the difference from mining. Still, keep an eye out to see if there's another price surge. In Intel news, their 8th generation Coffee Lake CPUs are to be announced on August 21st, officially. And that's for mostly purported quad-core i3 parts, though there will be others as well discussed. Intel will unveil the 8th gen core processors on 821 via Facebook Live. And that's going to be for the new generation that follows along after Skylake and Kaby Lake and will be fabricated on their 14 nanometer process once again. This coincides with Intel's process architecture optimization cadence as they ditched the TikTok cycle many years ago, even though it was only discussed recently. Intel is still transitioning to 10 nanometers. That'll be Cannon Lake, and Coffee Lake is the filler, along with Skylake X as we wait for 10 nanometers. And here's something that, this was probably discussed a week or two ago now, but is worth mentioning. The current, well, our for sure understanding at this point is that Coffee Lake will not use the 200 series boards for Intel. So you're gonna have to buy a new, new motherboard, which is sort of what Intel generally does. Uh, so new motherboards will be required, most likely. And then there are rumors that the i3s will be quad cores. I think that's more or less confirmed at this point with discussion about six cores also on the table. And Tech Report has an article about the i3-8300 and i3-8350K alleged CPUs that are coming out in the Coffee Lake family. So you can check that out for more information. In X399 motherboard news, the TR4 platform has seen growth over the last couple of weeks with the following vendors announcing new boards. MSI has the X399 Gaming Pro Carbon. ASRock has the Fatality X399 Professional Gaming Board and the X399 Tai Chi. ASUS has the ROG Zenith Extreme, which is what we tested on. The ROG Strix X399E Gaming the ASUS Prime X399A, and then there are a couple of other boards in the works from other vendors as well. EK Waterblocks has been in our news segments a lot lately. They're pushing a lot of products these days, and their newest one is Waterblocks for RX Vega. Those will come in either bare electrolytic copper base or nickel-plated base for the cold plates, and their full coverage blocks, they can be paired with a clear top or a black top if you prefer. Orders, I think, are live, and they should be shipping either soon or along with RX Vega's launch. Note that Vega 56 isn't available to the public yet, though. Also in cooling, Enermax has the LickTech TR4 AIO LCS closed-loop liquid coolers. It doesn't need that many words in the name. I, we get it. So it's, a, it's a CLC. It's, it's an Enermax CLC. It's called LickTech. They like using that naming uh, along with Lick Max, perhaps consider a different name. But they are announcing these for 100% IHS coverage on Threadripper. 
along with the Noctua air coolers that also have 100% IHS coverage. We have one of these coming in, so we'll be testing it whenever it gets here and hopefully be able to see how much of an impact that has versus the previous version where it was just a circular cold plate for these smaller chips. And other than that, 3000 RPM pumps, uh, they will be 240 or 360 millimeter radiators. They have an advertised TDP of 500 watts potential for cooling and priced at 130 and $160 slated for late August. The uh, pump supplier, by the way, for anyone interested, the Enermax and Lefa products for CLCs are made by Apal Tech. Uh, they make a couple other products in the industry as well, including former Silverstone liquid coolers. And they're one of the smaller competitors to the likes of Ace Attack and Coolit or Cool IT. Finally, there's still an ongoing NAND shortage expected until mid 2018. There's new information and insight over at Tom's Hardware that details how the NAND shortage very well may live into next year, which means that consumer pricing and availability will likely not see any respite. On top of the aggressive growth in multiple market segments like data center, laptops, mobile, internet of things, devices, all that stuff, Samsung and Apple both have flagship devices launching very shortly and both demand huge provisions of NAND. And this is compounded with the move to 64 layer 3D NAND that we've been seeing in SSDs lately as well. So as Tom's Hardware notes, business PCs are expected to exceed a 50% SSD attach rate now. It's gone up quite a bit over the last few years. It's not just enthusiasts anymore. NAND technology products are shipping to big data everywhere. NAND technology is in all the phones. It's, it's all over the place and supply is not great right now. So looks like it won't be any better until next year. Sorry for the bad news on NAND prices and GDDR prices but that's the industry we're in today. So as always, you can help us out directly with Patreon support at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. You can go to gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.